Good evening and welcome to a very special session on BIC streams. Politicization of the police, joined at the hip. Joining us on today's session are Julio Ribeiro, retired police commissioner and civil servant, and Danya Rajendran, journalist. Thank you for joining us today, Danya and Mr. Ribeiro. Before I hand over to Danya, a few quick instructions. Do sign up to our mailing list for updates from us or follow us on our social media channels. We will share the bios of today's panelists on the chat box that you see at the bottom of your screen. Next to the chat box is the Q&A box. Do post your questions in the Q&A box. With that, over to you, Danya. Thank you, Raghu. Uh, so the topic that we're going to discuss today is about the politicization of the police force. If you all remember a few months ago in June 2020, uh, there was a video which went viral across India of, an, of a radio jockey from Chennai actually speaking about two men who had been beaten to death. Uh, their names were Jairaj and Benix. They were father and son, and they died in the district of Tutukudi in Tamil Nadu. Immediately, there was nationwide outrage. Uh, all television channels were covering it back to back. Newspapers were writing about it. Uh, social media, uh, there was a so, lot of social media outrage, and immediately, there was a CBI probe ordered into it. And the CBI has now even filed a charge sheet in the case saying that the policemen did take these two uh, people into illegal custody and beat them up. But the point is one Jairaj and one Benix is all that we outrage about. But statistics show that a lot of people uh, die in Indian jails or in police custody. In fact, last year, around 1,700 people have died while in custody, either in police custody or in jail. And many of these could have been custodial torture deaths. The other thing, of course, that we have been talking about a lot recently is the politicization of the police force. We have been speaking that uh, with regard to even the Ornab Goswami case in Maharashtra, before that, what happened to Sushant Singh Rajput, the whole NCB, uh, ED, and everybody investigating those cases. The Kerala government, the CPIM is saying that central agencies are, are being used against them. We have seen what's happening in the Delhi riots case. So politicization of the police force is something that we have been discussing about for many, many years. But has the problem become really acute now? I would like to ask uh, Mr. Rabiero to please have his uh, introductory comments, and then we will go to more questions. If you wish, you can also type questions in the chat box. Uh, I will ask them on your behalf to him. So even during his address, if there are any doubts that come to your mind and you want to ask him that, please write that in the chat box. Sir? Now, you have mentioned about the two deaths in Tamil Nadu, but that is quite a different uh, aspect of policing which needs to be addressed. Even the, uh, in, you know, the Amnesty International has written to me previously when I was the police commissioner about deaths in police custody and about uh, custodial violence, custodial uh, interrogation, and that uh, it requires the public to oppose it because the public supports these uh, high-handed measures and that is why it continues. But uh, about the politicization of the police. I think you have mentioned two recent cases, the Sushant Singh Rajput's case and also, uh, which is the other one you mentioned about- Anab Goswami. Anab Goswami, and, very important, it also- And the CPIM uh, and lots of states have now withdrawn the general consent for the CBI. Yeah, so, uh, but the biggest examples of politicization or the evils of politicization you have, I have, I feel that the Gujarat riots of 2002, where the police did not do their duty. In fact, within within a month of, of the happening, I myself visited Ahmedabad, spoke to many of the senior police officers, and also many other members of the public, and I more or less know what were the instructions given. Though the police, nobody is going to give a statement to that effect. But the fact remains that those officers who had done their duty, who had controlled the riots in their jurisdictions, they were transferred out within 15 days. Mm. And in fact, on the day of the, of the riots, two ministers, one a minister sat in the DGP's control room and the other sat in the commissioner's control room. 
And I was shocked because I've never heard of ministers taking charge of the daily routine. I mean, uh, if you are going to control law and order, uh, does the minister control it? Or do you, con or does the police, the, the professional body control it? So it was funny. So I asked the uh, DGP, how did you all allow? And they said, well, it's you have never worked <laughs> in the present times. That is what the answer they gave me. Because I used to be DJ of Gujarat at one stage when the riots were taking place. Anyway, the politicization, uh, I will give these instances later if there is time. But how does politicization occur? It is The answer is very simple. By misuse of the powers of transfer and appointments. Misuse of the power of transfer and appointments. You know, Mr. Sharad Pawar is, uh, I remember one of his quotes in during a speech he gave somewhere. I don't remember the exact location or occasion, but he said that the transfer industry is the most lucrative one and it is also the biggest industry in India. I was, <laughs> I mean, he was so uh, 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 honest about it that this is what is happening and the power of transfers how is it misused now the power of appointing any police officer above the rank of sp and above that is right up to the dg superintendent of police to the through the digs and uh, the igs and then the uh, additional dg to the dg is all is with the government. Government means the home minister, minister of that state. And the power of transfers of people below that rank, below the IPS rank, is with the IPS officer who is a superintendent of police or a DIG or an IG or a DG. This is the, the standing orders. And it is breached in almost every way. Now, let me tell you when I joined service in 1953, uh, the ministers did not interfere with transfers and postings. They just kept a watch on the police officers and the ground, whether they were uh, misusing their own powers, whether they were crossing any line, and then they would uh, get this in information from the public. and convey it to the officer, either to the SP or even to the DG, right through. So that, that was uh, immediately rectified, either by warning the officer or certainly he would not be allowed to do it again. This worked very well. But later on, uh, they began, they were more interested. They were more interested in the transfers of the subordinate level because they are the ones who really are the cutting edge and can do them favors on the ground because it is their normal uh, uh, workers in the ground who want this and that done in order to keep their their followers in uh, happy. So this is uh, how the politicization occurs. Now, now you the, the senior officers, how were their transfers done? The IG would send his recommendations because he knows his officers, he knows his men and he is the, the father of the force and should be the father of the force. And if he is a straightforward, honest man, which normally there was no problem at the beginning in the soon after uh, independence, we never had any uh, complaints against officers of corruption or of high handedness. So they, uh, they, would, uh, they would be really people of, who would be supported by their own force and they would recommend, and most of those recommendations were accepted. If there was a problem, they would discuss it with the, with the IG. There was no DG at that time, with the IG and say that this is this, we feel like that. And in their discussions, it would be sorted out and that go with the consent of the IG. This doesn't happen at all today. Now I'll tell you today, we, had a, we have a very, big problem on our hand, the people of Maharashtra. We have an excellent DG, a very straightforward, honest person, a man who is respected by everyone, particularly by his force. 
and he is uh, uh, really fit to be the DG. And he has put in his papers, say he's got two years more of service, but he says, I would like to go to the center. Now he was plucked out from the raw, which, and he had a good position there. And he was probably going to be the chief at one time of raw. But even that he gave up in order because he was asked to come and to, to, to fill in certain lacunae or vacancies or, or uh, whatever you may call it. There was a need of a good officer at the top, at the, at the rank of uh, the DGP and at the rank of the police commissioner. These two officers, they were both pulled out from the center, one from RAW and one from the IB, and brought here to fill up those posts because they did not find others who were suitable enough at that uh, seniority to take that, those positions. Now, this man uh, has, been, has become so disgusted with the Aghadi government that we have today, the three parties, who, who uh, won't allow him to be the DG, in short. They, won't, they, they want their own things done. And I was surprised to read in the Marathi newspapers that, he's, that the DG is interfering interfering, listen to the language, with postings and transfers. Actually, he should be the one who should do the postings and transfers, and then the, the, everything will run smoothly. But they think that it is their divine right to do this because it brings them patronage, it brings them money sometimes. If he's interested in money, we have had home ministers who used to sell off these postings. I've mentioned it in, my, in, uh, in some of the, my writings that cash for transfers policy. It was a really, uh, and I even had to dis to go up to Mr. Sharad Pawar to, to sort out this problem. So and th this is how they uh, uh, interfere with postings and transfers, misuse their powers. And when they do that, the force loses all respect for their leader. They know that he doesn't have any teeth. And if, uh, they know that he is not going to be um, listened to. Then what is his uh, position with his men, with the public? And that is what uh, we are very worried about. Uh, a police uh, police chief who is not uh, sort of respected by his own men or by the public is not a police chief at all. And nobody would like to work in, that, in those conditions. So this is how the politicization takes place. Now, how, uh, what has changed now from 1953 when I joined? What has changed is that the police officers, the IPS officers, they have started using their hands to clap along with that of the politicians. They're rubbing each other's backs. And they have done this in order to, to uh, get postings of their choice, in order to see that they um, uh, climb the ladder of promotions and generally they do what the politician wants, particularly in the matter of postings of junior officers, so that they are in good books of the, of the politician. And this is how the scratching of each other's back has led to the politicization in a very big way. It has put, it has sent corruption through the roof and what is more, it has made the public uh, uh, totally uh, displeased with what the security con with their uh, with their security concerns. They have great concerns about security, which they should not have. If uh, any good government would like to see that security is is the first uh, is the first uh, subject which they would like to uh, attend to. So this is what is happening, and particularly if there is no no big uh, upheaval like uh, big uh, textile strike that I faced here or the revolt in the police force, then you, they find that things are cozy, they immediately start doing their own uh, political gap things. Now, uh, so the op IPS officers, they sell their souls. That is what we are worried about. You know, your Raghuram Rajan, the governor of the Reserve Bank, his father was my batchmate uh, in, in the police. He was the topper of our batch. And he used to come every year 
to 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 stay uh, for a few uh, days or a, a week or two with his son and then we used to meet up and discuss the same thing as to why are the police officers our new ips officer selling their souls they are selling their souls because they would like to have um, to go up the ladder as i said or postings of their choice either because they themselves are interested in making money or because they would like to be in, in the public eye uh, limelight so this, uh, this is one of the two reasons or they would like to stay in certain places which are the big cities and not go to the smaller places where there are postings that are available so these are the different reasons why uh, senior ips officers are selling their souls and thereby allowing the politicization to gallop now uh, how does i i mean if you ask me uh, how did i deal with it i mean i would like to mention so they anybody will ask what did you do about it i think that i was i worked in, a, in much better times where the where the politicians too were were little more uh, uh, you know amenable to reason and if you if you laid down the your your uh, principles in the beginning when you joined that particular district they would immediately understand and leave you alone and i used to do that by telling them when they approached me for transfers of subordinate officers i said please ask that gentleman to come and meet me i'll discuss it with him and see what are his problems either they didn't come or when they came uh, we discussed it in a most uh, not in, i did not go at him because then he would go and tell the politician that i he was he was uh, uh, mis mistreated so i didn't do that i just talked to him nicely and i said what is the point of going to a politician and trying to get your posting in this manner and this is how we used, i in particular uh, uh, managed to get them off my back now uh, you see uh, i had uh, addressed some Uh, IAS officers in Rajasthan. I was called there to address them, and they wanted to know from me how I could manage to uh, to avoid postings and transfers dictated to me by the politician. And I told them that look, I had the people on my side, I had the force on my side. How did you get them on your side? They asked, and I said by giving them justice in wherever they came and met me. they would get justice and no and people were satisfied and when they are satisfied they know you if they know you are on their side they they immediately cooperate so and the politicians know that the people are very happy with this gentleman and if we touch him or if we transfer him or we shift him we uh, will lose so many votes because the only thing they are worried about is votes that is what they are interested worried about they are not worried about anything else and uh so i i also remember uh, on one of my uh, one trip i made to london uh when when i was in the punjab and i met the police commissioner of london metropolitan police of scotland yard sir peter imbert and i had a lot of uh, discussion with him on uh, on different matters corruption for instance i said you have you don't have this big problem of corruption he says who told you <laughs> and, he, and we discussed it but one question i asked him how do you deal with these transfers and postings which the politicians come and ask you to do he said we never had this problem over there nobody comes and asks us nobody asks us now in us in the turn of the 20th 19th 19th 20th century 1900 at the 20th century that is toward the end of the 20th century of the uh they you had uh, uh tammany hall that is the democratic party headquarters and i read that number of policemen the beat policemen they would go to meet the politicians in tammany hall to ask for transfers they would like to get those places where they got free food and free drink and things like that and they would 
uh, or, or more or some extra money. And this is uh, was stopped because of public pressure and public understanding. You don't have this problem anymore in the US. So I suppose when we too will have that drop, uh, I don't know how many years more it will take us, but uh, I hope sooner than later, we, we stop uh, um, uh, we stop the politicians from interfering in the internal working of the force. That is, the, the police chief that is appointed should be an honest man, should be a man with uh, capability. There's no problem about people with capability. They have to only bother about whether they are also involved in, in making extra money, which is uh, something that some of them have an itch for. So they, that is what they should look. They never had this problem earlier, but now it is unfortunately increasing. But there are many others. There are many, many of them, at least half of them I can vouch for. They are absolutely straight. I'm talking about Maharashtra or basically Bombay city, because we stay in, Bombay, in the city and we know how our officers operate. So you cannot fool the public. The public knows everything. And unless the public in, intervenes and sees that politicization is stopped, we are not going to stop it. I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, so, um, see, I must tell you that the, the Gujarat um, uh, period that I spent four months, I was sent there at DGP of Gujarat in the month of June, I think, or July of, nine, of 1985, July. And uh, I was told that in, uh, you, you go there for four months and you please stop the, the rioting, communal rioting, which is uh, taking, which has been uh, rampant for the last five months. And he said, we have the army. We have the army there for five months and the army is pressing us to, to, to release them. First thing I did when I reached there, before I went, sorry, I told the, uh, the politicians that is in fact the prime minister and, and the uh, home minister that look, uh, I'm going there because you want me to go there, but uh, you, you uh, I'm not going to listen to any of your people about transfers, postings and how I'm going to solve this problem. They should give me a, a totally free hand and I promise you, I'll stop it. Then I met the the police, the army chief, and the army chief said that my men have become so useless. There are five battalions, and if there is war, they are of no use to me. I'll require five months to put them in battleship. So please release them as fast as you can. So I said, I promise, within a week I'll do it. And I did it. I don't think it's difficult to 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 sort out communal problems because you know you just have to put the, the instigators out of out of commission. And, and that had not been done. And the army, of course, doesn't know how to do that. They don't know what they're dealing with. So this is how uh, uh, we, but you know, I wrote a site when they started writing to me, the politician asking for transfers of subordinate. I did not reply to them. I asked my staff officer, Mr. Namudri, who was my staff officer, excellent officer, is now settled in Kerala. He, uh, we made a, a, a cyclostyle letter, cyclostyle, mind you, saying that the DGP does not agree uh, to do this. And Mr. Namudri would sign it as my staff officer and sent it off. So the, uh, the chief minister phoned me saying, Ribeiro Saab, please don't send these cyclostyle letters because uh, they, they, they say that I have. I, I've got no um, uh, no influence at all with you. That is what my uh, my followers are saying. So please stop that. At least you send separate letters and sign it yourself. So I said, I'll do it if I don't get so many. If I get too many of these letters, you please tell your people not to send these letters. And I think the letters stop. So this is how the politicization takes place. Because if the policemen, they are very shrewd. If they know that uh, you are not the person to decide that if they approach one politician and they get that posting, well, that is done. But then you lose your soul. You have given your over your authority to the politician. And that is what causes all the problems. Now, 
How many minutes more do I have? Uh, another five minutes or more? Why? All right. Now, I just want to point out to you about a book that has been being published by an ex-IAS officer, Mr. Gopala Krishnan Shankaran. And I, I don't know from which cadre he is, but he is a member of my uh, uh, group called the CCG, the, the Constitutional Conduct Group. We write many letters to the, to the press. We release it to the press. We write to everybody on various matters that concern, concern the people. And I think you might have heard about us, but this gentleman is a very honored member of our this, and he has written this book, The Yes Man. And it's very interesting to read it, but the recent arrest of Goswami and uh, that uh, is, where Mr. Jaiswal, incidentally, the DGP, I don't think he was consulted at all. It was a, it was a faux pas into, into my mind because there was no offense, really. The man had not paid his dues. Mr. Goswami obviously does not like to uh, pay his dues, which is very common in the police also sometimes. But he uh, uh, he did pay his dues, and, and the person who, who provided the services then was um, in financial difficulty, and he committed suicide. And before that, he had, he had killed his mother also for reasons I'm not able to uh, fathom. It has not been as yet established. So this, uh, uh, I mean, taking him for this, I mean, Mr. Goswami probably was rightly in, in the jail, but not, but for the wrong reason. The reason was wrong, and then in the court it was bound to, to be, to be uh, uh, sh shot down. So this is what I feel. But then he is facing a much more serious charge of, uh, of. Um, playing with the figures of the TRPs, etc., which I think that uh, should cause him some, some amount of, of concern. But, uh, the, but everybody knows that he is a favorite of the government in power, so he gets a preferential treatment, which uh, uh, in a democracy like ours should not be so, but it is. There are many instances of such preference, I'm quite sure, and I, I'm not surprised it has taken place. But uh, uh, now if you ask me if the officers unite and say, we are not going to do this, that is almost impossible because there are officers of all types. And there are officers now who have become so uh, heady with power that they are not going to bother about what the more saner ones uh, 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 desire. So they will, they, they are going to do it. The only solution to the problem is for the public to be informed and become knowledgeable about how the uh, politicization happens. What are the evils of politicization? What is it, it for them? They're going to get a, a, a force which is well trained. Incidentally, they say the force is not properly trained. That is not so. The training that I received in 53 was absolute peanuts as to what they are being trained for now. And, and I've seen it because I go to the training. I now not, not, not for the last few years, but before I used to go. And I saw that the level of training has increased leaps and bounds, including in-service training. And that is right down to the constabulary level. My, my, an NGO with, with which I am connected, the PCGT, actually does this work in Maharashtra. We go to the training institutions of the police and, and, and talk to them about, about their way of behaving, their way of talking, their, uh, their duty to the, to the people, and the fact that they are servants and not the rulers. And that is most important for them to know. So this is in short how, uh, uh, what happens when the police is politicized the 2002 riots, one, 1984 Delhi riots. That's another uh, clear example of politicization. And the effect on the investigations of politicization in the Sushant Singh Rajput case. I mean, it was the man committed suicide. He was found inside a locked room. 
they took four and a half hours to break down that room and and yet and they are saying that uh, how, how could ghosts get in and 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 murder him anyway now they have given up that because they say perhaps this uh, she, uh, ria had been uh, the person who has caused caused him to commit suicide well uh, i think that is another uh, fallacy which we have to put because a lot of young girls or boys are being are being uh, put inside on the ground that uh, the opposite party in a love affair which has gone ori has committed suicide i don't think this was what what uh, amounts to abetment to suicide abetment requires much more than just a failed uh, love affair It, there's much more there you got to actually goad the person and hope that he commits suicide which doesn't happen in most cases i don't think there are any such cases at all so they have to have another look at that provision of abetment to suicide and uh, that is a different matter we are talking about politicization it exists in the investigation of crime of political which has a political context and it uh, in uh, also uh, when in um, dealing with law and order situation so in both cases uh, the, the public suffers they should know that they suffer and if the people know that then they will force the politician to give up this this uh, and post good people not yes men as as dgps and commissioners when they post yes men you have it you have the clear recipe for disaster and this is what is happening in most states today uh, so uh, th this is what i wanted to talk about and uh, uh, if there is have i finished my time i think i finished my half an hour and uh, yes i think yeah i think you can ask me whatever you want and then yeah go to the third okay. stage later sure. So I was reading an article of yours recently in which I'm just quoting you. You said, "But those who are politically conscious can discern the clever but not so subtle games that politicians play with policemen as pawns on their chessboard." This is what you wrote, uh, and you have been telling us uh, in your talk that things were a lot better when when you were in force, perhaps in the 80s or 70s. How do you think? Uh, why do you think things deteriorated so much, especially in the last few years? and i think vijay padaki one of the persons people in the audience have a related question he wants to ask in your opinion which are some of the cases of politicization that stands out as the most shameful uh, as far as you are concerned i think the most shameful is the is the the handing of the rats by the police in gujarat because you know i was the dg of gujarat for four months and i know those senior officers and they are quite capable of handling it in fact some of them junior ones even handled it in their districts to have such clear uh, uh, i mean uh, it, it was quite obvious that they were not interested in curbing the assaults and then they perhaps they were told that it will finish in one day but it, such things don't finish in a day it goes on and on and uh, it went on and on and it's a very interesting way in which those riots were conducted you know they uh, no person of means was killed except the mp only the MP, congress mp who was killed no other man no other person of means of uh, of the have to haves was was killed the haves got all their businesses all destroyed that was also done and they had to start off all over again but they were not touched but only the poor were massacred and uh, uh, this is uh, how the whole thing was conducted it's very interesting that who were used for the for for the for, uh, as the instruments of the massacre so all that is uh, something that people should read about and understand and uh, it also i feel uh, uh raise the the status of of the chief minister he became the prime minister after that because the people in, incidentally were on the side of the massacre that is another interesting fact i i was called for a dinner and where 50 50 odd people were present there were doctors lawyers there were people of means and uh 
gentry whom I knew because I had worked there for four months. And uh, uh, they were so happy about what had happened. They were so happy and they uh, repeated all the usual cliches about four wives and, and, and 20 children and how the, all that they did, which I, I tried to, to argue with them about, I mean, factually, if there were four wives for each person, they would require four billion women for a million men. But that, they, 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 they were rather taken aback by that assertion, but they, but they continued to say, yeah, no, no, they, 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 they are a menace. So this kind of, uh, of uh, thing that happened, that was the worst case, according to me. But now it happens every day. Today, I mean, of late, it is increasing. Now you have this Hathras case, you know, in UP. Where in UP is in a pretty bad state, if you ask me. And I don't think, I, I feel that things will really explode over there because how long can people uh, accept all this, this injustice? And uh, I don't know how that state is actually uh, being run uh, in a manner that no, the law itself is not at all uh, even understood or people um, are asked to pay if, even if they are somebody is, is not is somewhere else and he's asked to pay for the damage done by him during a riot when he's not anywhere around I mean it's and uh, and this seizure of his property etc I don't know whether the the manner in which it is being done is really legal it's it's uh, it's got to be tested and I think that they're just going bonkers. It's really uh, something that I worry about a lot. Yeah. So, so you were talking about transfers. My question to you is the system of transfers and appraisals that are uh, there now, how transparent is it? And if it is made more transparent, would that uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe bring down the politicization of the force if there's more transparency in how uh, appraisals and uh, transfers are done? You see, the supre the police commission had recommended Hmm. that there should be a security commission which was headed by the chief minister or the home minister if the chief minister had a separate home minister usually they hold the home portfolio like in bihar today in yesterday mr uh, uh, nitish kumar has taken over the home and in maharashtra also it often happens but uh, uh, but what happens is that if you uh, uh, they, yeah, uh, let me let me collect. My... I'm saying if it becomes transparent, if the whole process is transparent, then would police officers be less in the clutches of politicians if the tran if the transfers and appraisals for more? more I, I I really don't know the answer to that question, but mm -hmm. as I said, the police co uh, commission had recommended that there would there should be a commission. With the, mm. uh, with the with the judge of the high court to be a member of that of that body as well as the leader of the opposition and they should come to an unanimous decision about the person who should occupy those the, the senior most position that of the dgp and the commissioner of police of mumbai and i think that that was never put into practice we were we went to the supreme court mr prakash singh a very respected member of our fraternity. He lodged that, that PIL in the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court um, upheld his contention, but nobody is willing to, to bring in the legislation to implement that because all the political parties want to fiddle around with the police. They find that their power emanates from that, uh, you know, that show of authority that the police can, can uh, uh, Bring to bring bring to the front, you know they are a uniform force. Yeah. So when we speak about politicization of the police force, we have to speak about the central forces like the CBI, the Enforcement Directorate, the NCB, which is in, in news a lot now. What do you how how do you see the politicization of these forces, and uh, um, 
around nine states have now withdrawn general consent for the CBI, which means CBI cannot any longer file cases unless a state gives permission. So uh, they have all rights under federal structure to do that. But does it also show uh, the amount of mis uh, mistrust between states and the union government and the extreme politicization of these forces? You see, the, uh, I would blame the union home ministry and the union home minister for this state of affairs. It never happened before. But then he's going all out and he doesn't seem to bother because uh, he's just re releasing these, these uh, uh, units, the CBI, the enforcement director, of course, is under the finance minister. And uh, you have also uh, the NIA, even that which is supposed to uh, attend only to, to extremist cases, you know, the, the but in Kerala and all, they looked at love jihad cases. Yes, <laughs> but that, that is not really their job. But what they are supposed to do is to, terrorism is what they are supposed to put under control. Well, to a great extent, they have also give, give them the, the, the credit for it because um, we don't find many such cases now. Very few. We used to have a number of these cases. Uh, of explosions in the trains and things like that. Nothing of that sort is, uh, is apparent. Also, the intelligence that the NIA has perhaps been able to muster is has, uh, has helped. But their use in, in going after other cases, I mean, to, which is not supposed to be their mandate, is rather uh, funny. Now, even that you're talking about the drug controllers, I mean, they're not supposed to bother about some uh, users, in fact, users are to be pitied. They have mm. to be taken for counselling, but they have got all all these big um, Bollywood uh, people, and I don't know what pleasure they are getting. Originally, we felt that this whole case, um, the Sushant Singh Rajput, um, was to um, ensure that there was a lot of public acclamation for this action. Uh, in favor of Rajput, but they found that not even the Rajputs in Bihar were interested. And then they gave it up. But then this continued to, to arrest all the Bollywood figures. I, perhaps they're getting some kind of, um, of uh, what are they getting? I think some kind of kick from it. I don't know. So, sir, when we sp spoke to people in the NCB or the CBI who were looking at the Sushant Singh Rajput cases, many of them would say that these are trivial cases. It will not stand in the court of law. It won't even reach, uh, like for example, Deepika Padukone uh, is questioned by the NCB. These are all cases where even a, sorry, uh, a charge sheet may not get filed. So, and those policemen or women do feel that these act, this action should not, should not have been taken. So what is the way out for them when there is extreme political pressure? What really is the way out for, I mean, there is only a, a handful who would be brave and say, I don't want to fall into the spit. What, what is the way out? You see, the only way out is for leadership, good leadership. If you have a proper leader who is not afraid to, to, to question the, or who has got that stature, that even the politician will, will, will bother about, will, will not try to trouble him. That is the type of man they should appoint them. Now, the point is that uh, if the leader cannot, so, cannot uh, uh, prevent this from happening, cannot allow his own subordinates to be bullied, then I think he's not a leader at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I, re I remember one case which I would like to mention to you. There was uh, uh, somebody, in a very good investigating officer uh, from the IPS, but a junior man who had given that um, the Godra train riot case and he was investigating it properly, you know, and getting hold of the correct people. And suddenly the CM makes a statement saying that the ISAIS is behind it. Now, this man was also asked at the same time, and he said, no, I don't think ISIS is there. So there was a, a contradiction between the CM and, the, and a junior police officer, which came out in big headings in all the Gujarat papers. So the, that officer was called. And, and, and pulled up and said, go and meet so-and-so. And that so-and-so told him, why don't you just uh, uh, help a little bit? And uh, um, the CM wants that done, you do it. Now, this was very funny kind of, of, uh, of advice. And I asked him, did you not go to your seniors? 
no senior was willing to to step in they're so mm. afraid of the political leadership mm. and they said you don't know this leadership they're quite terrible but even then i mean you have to face it you can't allow your juniors to be bullied in this manner and told to do something which is patently wrong and false so i think that uh, if uh, i don't know i i would be very worried about working in such conditions yeah. so i have a question and i think uh, one mr prem chandavarkar uh, also has a similar question so i'm going to combine both this and ask my question is do you think the upsc for example is needed can't we have state police officers and the state deciding their ranks uh, instead of a upsc i'm i'm just mooting an idea uh, prem is asking in many countries the police force reports to local government rather than the state government this makes accountability clearer and will change the transfer game should this be a dimension of reform in india now he's talking about the local governments being in charge i am saying why not the state has its own uh, control over the police force including it, its ips cadres you know what you are trying to actually say and mr prem also that look uh, this i the we don't need the ips and we don't need the ias we don't need the the administrative but there are different reasons why they were put in place particularly because of bonding between the states there are people from other states who come to to a different state so this is one and number two uh, you have a uh, uh, there still is a difference i i can see between many of the ips officers unfortunately the number is dwindling and if it dwindles even further and becomes a trickle then of course the i i the the uh, all india service may not be actually required but the mm. government of the day has more uh, has got more uh, confidence shall i say or more love for the officers from the from from the local officer who are recruited directly as into the state service they have uh, that that happens and it's natural it's nothing unnatural but then the uh, ips officers what i feel is they are the ones who should stand up and there are many officers i can tell you in maharashtra i have come across them who are very straight forward honest and are willing to take on these kind of problems they might suffer in you know in some cases but the people know them and i think the people's love and affection is a much bigger bigger reward than any other reward they can get i think that if i had that i wouldn't bother about other rewards even for promotion yeah the next question i want to ask you is about reverse politicization which is people in the police force politicizing the force we see that very ramp in these days like uh, for example there's an ips officer in karnataka i don't want to take names but this ips officer is very right wing in thought tweets everything is like that there are many officers like that is in what? the post. they very they, they are very pro government pro right yeah. pro right and pro government so they tweet like that they speak like that we have seen young officers like for example recently an officer called anna malai who was an ips officer in karnataka he is in his 40s he quit and he's joined the bjp i mean we have seen police young police officers join the congress also but are police people are police officers now politicizing the force because staying within the force many of them have very strong political opinions with which they are expressing also i just read out to you uh sardar madhavai patels yeah he is sardar his statement you know the sardar is being uh, remembered by the party in power today by the bjp in a very big way and they and i feel that they should try and get people to emulate him by by publishing what he has said this perhaps they will not publish but they should what he said was and he was uh, he was giving his advice to civil servants and he said a civil servant cannot afford to and must not take part in politics he his uh, should not involve himself in communal wrangles to depart from the path of rectitude in either of these respects politics or communal wrangles 
is to debase police uh, public service and lower its dignity. I know I've quoted these pieces from Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Shankaran's book about, you know, uh, that yes, what is the name of the book? Yes, men are dangerous. So I think this this is a very relevant thing, but there are more and more of such cases I, mm. I, I find. And it's very, there was an officer who became a, a DG of the I, director of the CBI for a short time recently. He is quite Mahi openly, Mahi uh, Mahi I don't Mahi know, Mahi. but yes. he openly, he openly states, and this is not what, uh, you know, I must tell you what. Very, uh, he's very uh, bigoted and he's very anti-Muslim on uh, social media. He has no problem saying the stuff that he does. So how do you even trust that this person was a police officer who was in charge of something at the CBI? So my related question to you is that, do you believe that it is right for police officers to join politics, especially many who are uh, retiring from the force in between their service and then joining politics? Many who retire, uh, like they finish their service, they retire and join. Do you think either ways it's best for, for uh, police officers to stay away from politics? Of course they have to stay, they, have, they are supposed to. They're not supposed to dabble in politics. They're not supposed to take sides. Their only oath is to the constitution and the constitution takes precedence. And it is very well written in the constitution that you have to be secular. You don't have to take sides. You have to talk to, the, you stick to the truth and give justice to people. These people will not be able to give justice. Anybody who is politically inclined, who is communally inclined, how can he give justice? It's impossible. I remember when I was a very junior officer, a superintendent of police in a district called Parbani. And there used to be an a, a IB officer who was a year senior to me, and he was an excellent man. He would come every, every three months to inspect his local office. And, you know, once I praised his a certain uh, DYSP who was uh, in charge of that area, and he said, no, um, uh, Julio is not, is not that good. I said, why? What is wrong? He said, he has a prejudice against Muslims. This is this was uh, Mr. S. E. Joshi, who later became the chief of RAW, one of our great officers, I must say, because he is an extraordinary officer, S. E. Joshi. But he he actually told me that. And incidentally, both he and the and the officer we were discussing belong to the same caste, same caste and same community. Incidentally, because that was the standard of people in those days. Yeah. So, uh, someone from the audience, Vivian Perez, has a question. He's asking, "Why is the IPS Association so weak?" And it so, seems so. What? Why is the IPS Association so weak? So weak. And it seems it does not support its own colleagues who are pressurized and humiliated by the political system. <laughs> I, I, this, I think, this IPS Association is uh, is only meant. I don't think uh, even in my time. I don't think the association had any big uh, role to play, either to preserve our own, uh, uh, you know, status or our salaries and any nothing of the sort. Recently, now after I have retired, the IPS officers <laughs> approached me to go and meet the then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. So I, please go and meet him for our for our demands, which I did. I went there and spoke to Mr. Manmohan Singh because I knew him from my Punjab days. But uh, this, this is what has happened. I mean, they, they don't seem to have any clout at all. And this is partly because they, they themselves uh, have not comported themselves in a manner that is dignified or, or which shows that they are people who have sworn that they have uh, followed the oath, they have been loyal to their oath to the constitution and the law. If they do that, I think if many more officers do and they are the members and they go forward, I think that the government will have to listen to them. But they are mostly meant for uh, departmental matters, you know, their own service service condition, etc. I don't think it's uh, relevant in any other way. They should stand up for these things uh, as to how the politicians interfere, how they have taken over the administration of the force. They want to run the force. The politicians are supposed to ensure that police officers don't 
cross certain lines, but instead of that, they want them to cross lines and they get involved in the actual administration. This is where they should protest. Okay. I'm going to read out a question from Mr. Maja Daruwala. He yeah. says, from your talk, he says two things that you have said. One is the public wants extrajudicial killings. Is that sufficient for the whole force to be complicit in it? He asked post- Public wants what? No, because if, while you were talking to us, you said that uh, a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, what, what you call as uh, encounter killings and extrajudicial killings are encouraged by the public because the yeah. public believes in instant justice. Yeah. But he's saying, is that enough for a whole force to be complicit? Now, the reason why I had mentioned that two deaths in Tamil Nadu and the outrage is because when the deaths had initially happened, the Tamil Nadu government did try to protect the police force yeah. and say that, no, no, that must not have happened. So also it's a give and take, right, between the police force and the government. The, pol the politicians protect the police force and the police force in turn protects the politicians. You see, in that particular case, uh, first mm -hmm. of all, let me, I'm very happy to, to talk to uh, Maya, uh, Maja Maja. Yeah, but she pronounces it Maya. And, and I know her very well. She's a very good good friend of mine for many, many years. And, uh, okay, and my... I, I've quoted her father also in my <laughs> in my talk. The general Field Marshal Manik Shaw is her father. So I have I quoted uh, him also in her talk. I hope Maya you take note of that. So uh, about uh, that particular case. There are two things that I must point out to you. One is that a police woman, she was the main person who, who gave evidence. Mm. She, she obviously didn't like what was happening. Mm. Otherwise, she would not have had that courage to go against the rest of the force. Because there is a, there's an omerta, you know, the silence that they, like the, like the underworld. And mm. they keep quiet about these things. But they, whereas this woman came out. And, and number two, I'm one, I wonder how the magistrate gave mm. that remand. For what? For keeping our shop open? Is it a case to be to, for, for remand? Uh, I really don't know how this happens. And that should be also looked into. The, mm. the magistrates also had no business to give the remand. Police, police remand, for what? It's so obviously to, to, to teach those people a lesson. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read another question from Mr. Raghavendra Oradkar. He says, in spite of Supreme Court giving instructions about fixed tenure, which you were speaking about the reforms for DG of police, police establishment board, for transfer of subordinate officers in police department, etc. He says, all, all these are in events, but do these reforms really work? Because there is a general decay in the value system. It's not just about reforms, right? Even if you bring reforms in, the decay has set in. So then what is the way out? You know, I personally have come come around to the view that uh, unless the public raises its voice, that is why what we are doing here in Mumbai through an NGO called the PCGT, the Public Concern for Governance, we are going to the colleges and telling them about all these matters, how these things are run, how governance is done, and how they should understand. Because when they first... They have to understand what is happening. You see, to say that the police is so bad and they are very corrupt. And, I mean, who is encouraging all this? I, I, personally, I know many instances. I've written about it in my book. But that these are things that have to be addressed. People should understand. And once they understand, they will take up cudgels. So we start with the young and tell them this is what is happening. So because you have insisted many times that the only way out perhaps is for public nuance and public knowledge about what is happening. There is a question. I'm just trying to search for it. Yeah. Ahanish has asked, how can citizens of India get together to stop the politicization of the police force? Are there existing platforms that are working towards this that one can join or support in any manner? I would like to add that can public conscience really lead to that kind of change? Because... Uh, that also is an echo chamber, right? There are only a very few uh, people in the public who think that extrajudicial killing should not happen, who are not okay with politicization, who think what the CBA is not doing right. So can that be really a solution, uh, public awareness and public uh, responding to it? 
I see no other uh, option because mm -hmm. I think the government is not going to do this. Any government. I'm not talking about the BJP government. I'm talking about Congress. You have seen now in Maharashtra, there is the BJP is out and three other parties are there and they they have they have hounded out a very good DGP, a man of absolute valor. I mean, a person who could you really respect. I mean, this is ridiculous. And they want people, I don't know what they want, yes men. And yes men are not going to help for very long because they will in fact put them in the ditch. That is what is going to happen finally. And people don't, people understand all this. They should, un and if they don't, it is our duty to educate them. We're going to educate them. I think that there should be more uh, knowledge because most people, when you talk about police reforms, they say they should be more, um, you know, uh, trained. They should be better training. They should talk prop. They should talk politely. But this is, if that doesn't really. The leadership can get that done. Hmm. Leadership can get it done. So how can if, people participate? So get good leaders. How do you select good leaders if there is public uh, pressure? The, uh, the, uh, the politicians will not be able to uh, withstand pressure beyond a certain but limit. But how, how can the public exert pressure and organize? Well, you are asking whether there is a platform. I don't know of any particular platform, but I think these platforms can be... Uh, now, once they know that this is happening, they will uh, local people uh, will get hold of these platforms. But they are more bothered about these political parties who have their own quest for power, and then they... Uh, the, the things that really man matter to the people are not taken up. That should be taken up. This, that, uh, what is the security climate? How is it being vitiated? Why is it being vitiated? It is being vitiated because of, of the dirty politics and the way that they, you politicize the force. They are politicizing other arms of government also because they have the power of transfers and promotion there also. But it doesn't matter so much as this because of the security of life and, and live, life and property that, that is involved in this particular. Yeah. So, so these are the matters that you have to take up. And we will uh, propagate it. We, this is our job. We do whatever we can. And we can do more if more people join and, and, uh, and say we are going to do this. It's going to happen. It will happen. One day it will happen. And what do you think is the role the judiciary has to play here? Think, looking at how things are panning out, the judiciary also has been criticized quite a bit because they interfere only in certain cases uh, and they do not speak uh, in other cases. So how much do you think has judicial intervention really reduced? And do you think that's a huge disappointment too? The judicial intervention would definitely be an answer, but I don't think the judiciary is now also under attack. There is a, uh, politicization is, is creeping into that also, plus the armed forces, my goodness. So it's a very, very dangerous proposition. Uh, field Marshal mm -hmm. Manik Shaw mentioned that their people might become field marshals. This is a statement, you just have a look. But sir, uh, one thing I want to ask is, you just said that everybody is under attack, right? As in all the, all the pillars are under attack, which is judiciary, police, armed forces. But sometimes when I um, observe the cat, what these police officers and how the armed forces behave, or even the judiciary, I think they also are very ideologically uh, tilted to one side now. So they don't, they are part of the system which is propagating it. This is happening now. It will never happen before. In the armed forces, there was never such this. It is a new thing. But judiciary is definitely there now. And even yeah, in the police. Yeah, I know that because of the appointments and transfers, they, they do that. They you know, they will keep back some, you know, two, two or three cases where they have kept back the, the recommendation of the Chief Justice and his colleagues and his companions. They keep it back so that the person doesn't become a Chief Justice. It's like that. I mean, these are the tricks that politicians play. They're not bothered really about, they're bothered about the party and the party should be in power, the party should that is what politics is all about. But in the meantime, the people are going to suffer. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there are quite a few questions about police reforms. I mean, everyone wants to know why have reforms not been implemented? Will that change? At least two or three questions are regarding that. And Jamuna Rao asked many police personnel, even the corrupt ones, 
contest elections and win do people actually get what they deserve are people getting what they deserve so one is about the reforms is that the answer and the second one is about uh, politicians uh, sorry police the uh, main reform policy. is to depoliticize the police that is the main reform and that is done but they had re recommended one uh, uh, security commission chaired by the chief minister or the home minister and consisting of the leader of the opposition a uh, uh, serving a judge of the high court to to decide on the top appointments not every appointment but the top ones and then the downward in the for the other appointment there would be departmental um, uh, committees so all that uh, they they misuse it and they use that you see they have interpreted it in their own way but the mm -hmm. real purpose of that to see that you get people who are beyond politics and beyond communal uh, feelings and this and who are beyond corruption all that is thus is immaterial to them because it doesn't affect their their elections and that is why if it affects election then of course they would bother but it doesn't affect so it is, we have to keep on trying to educate people and tell them that these political parties now the you can't say that we are people will say you are against the bjp but what about the government here in maharashtra it is in fact you know that i i would say that the chief minister before was a very was an honest man but also beside that he ran a pretty good administration he didn't interfere in these postings and transfer of police officers because that is what i know because i keep a, a watch on that but uh, uh, this is absolutely shocking the way they are going about it but so you insist that the public should be more knowledgeable and they should they should talk against it but my my real concern is the public discourse in india is now in binaries it's either i stand with you or i stand against you either you're for the nation or you're against the nation if your father government means you are for the nation so <laughs> when the nuance is stripped off our conversations when we are always talking in binaries how do you think the public will really understand even when uh, uh, like three or four of those people who are who allegedly raped a woman in hyderabad were shot down i would say a large part of the public did not have any nuance they were all encouraged encouraging of of it and they said yes that's the kind of uh, police force we need so <laughs> we really, can we really trust our public to have this nuance i mean yeah. are we still living in an echo chamber where only a few have it well you know the Uh, that is a different problem altogether the judicial process is so slow that people are wanting quick justice you know this used to happen anybody who was charged for murder mm -hmm. they used to be tried uh, every day i mean the hearing would be every day i was a law student so i used to go to the sessions court and watch but and within a year the band was either acquitted very few were acquitted and mostly he was convicted he went off to jail but now <laughs> this doesn't happen anymore people um, yeah, the, the, it's like a magistrate's court where the courts where the case is adjourned and adjourned and adjourned again and it goes on for years i mean i don't know why uh, i i discussed this with chief justice varma when i met him once in dehradun and i said why is this happening and why don't the judiciary stop this kind of thing why why should they be just postponed like this in this manner and and just because some majest some advocates want people to be acquitted because they can then approach the witnesses or they can suborn them with money or some other way so it is a very uh, unfortunate thing that uh, these uh, the people then support they support custodial violence they support um, the fake encounters only because of this at the in fact that these uh, police officers who are uh, very you know uh, very adept at at making at getting involved in in uh, encounter they call encounter specialists they become heroes and mm. uh, bollywood is prepared to make biopics on their on their uh, <laughs> you know one of these fellows from reliance i think they came to me for will you allow a biopic i said nothing doing because uh, i don't jump from from rooftops to rooftop the only thing i did to give uh, justice to people i didn't i didn't uh, 
do anything like jumping after people or running after that and that is fine you can ask the encounter specialist is where you should go they are the ones yeah there's an unrelated question there's someone who's asking murli the rao he's asking what is your opinion on sanjeev bhat what is the what is your take on the sanjeev bhat case sanjeev bhat well you know it is easy for the government if they want to catch hold of something it happened many years ago this happened some years ago when he was junior yeah but i don't know i hear lots of unfortunately i know most of the officers in in gujarat at who were there in towards the end of my time and i think that he gave them an opportunity hmm. uh, of course to catch him on that case it was there were so many others who have done the same thing who have been involved in in uh, death in police custody this was the death in police custody there so many others who have also they were not touched because this was selective that was true it was a selective choice but also uh, they you know in these matters you yourself have to be above board hmm i mean not i'm not talking about uh, this particular matter of death in police custody but also in your other dealings with people do the people talk well of you they will the people general public you can never fool they know all about you so if you have not behave properly it is a problem hmm. to to save you from such damnation so i am very happy to see your trust in the general public huh? uh, i am very happy to see your trust in the general public that the public will awaken because for me uh, that trust is actually eroding every day day by day i sometimes think that the public is becoming as bad as the as the politician at least a section of the public so now because of the social media and other things they they get you know carried away because yes. even in nazi germany people got carried away you know that so exactly. uh, and then uh, well you get carried away like that but at certain time the real, um, uh, they, they will they will become more knowledge they will they will understand what is what we will wait for that day so <laughs> I, i i will end with one last question so uh, jugjeev singh is asking is the politicization politicization of the police also happening in other low income countries in the world so since you have looked at this quite deeply is it a is it a problem only in india or are there many countries which have the same issue are there countries which had it and they dealt with it in a particular way are there any examples you can take no no you see as far as we are concerned we are we want to become one of the uh, in the committee of nations we want to sit on the high table that is our intention mr modi ji has made it very clear now the problem is that if you have to do that you have also to become more uh, uh, you know uh, people who follow the law in particularly the rule of law etc so if you don't follow that then of course if the rule of law does not prevail you are not going to get into the high table at all and i know that in uh, uh, in a place like england uh, where, where i've gone and discussed with the police commissioner uh, i think it is much much uh, better there is this for example he told me there is a problem of corruption but certainly not of of not the type of corruption we see on the streets here but you know on the special forces and all that some it pockets where you have that but here you have it quite rampant across the board and uh, in i we also went and discussed with the police commissioner in new york when i was there and uh, well then i think it is not so not so good as in uh, london it uh, there is uh, the mayor decides things the local what you said local this but mm. uh, they have their own system of checks and balances but here the checks and balances for some reason don't work for example the maya daruwala has been going around you ask her to us asking for Uh, for this uh, uh, that complaints authority which has been uh, ordered by the supreme court so there is a complaints authority here there's a there's a judge who is supposed to be the chairman 
there's a police officer on the uh, as a member there's other member from the from the open market i mean some member of the public the police officer is the one who runs the whole show here in i mean i think now they have they have wound up that particular unit but uh, when it was i had all my interns you know the students who were interning with us to go and watch the proceedings it is it was a shame to see what kind of of uh, complaints authority not one single case was was and you know they are supposed to give uh, their reports to the to the um, legislature which they have not done at all and and uh, i don't know how they get off with all this and they get paid and they get a car and they get a driver they get a flat i mean they get all that and and they are not working at all they are not doing what they are supposed to do so stop deaths in police custody for instance that is the one of their main job why can't they do that nothing is not nothing they do absolutely nothing except um, a sinecure job so i don't know it's a uh, part of our problem so we have spoken about more transparency in transfers and appraisals about having braver leaders in the police force about people questioning uh, the politicization more that general awareness has to increase my last question to you would be how do you think the media in the country has to stand up we have spoken about judiciary also what do you think is the media's role now especially in these times the media i don't know uh, you have you all have also fallen uh, i don't know whether the institution is supposed to be the the fourth estate i mean and uh, i don't know whether they they really there there are produced papers of course who stand up to that but generally they are supposed to question the government in power whichever government is in power why are you doing this why are you doing that and 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 protect the people from misuse from the abuse of power are they doing it mm -hmm. i worked for 2 years in the national standard which is now the indian express before i joined the ips and sharda sharda prasad very big um, you know he was press advisor to indira gandhi in his very before he retired and he, he was my immediate boss and he said he used to tell me that this is a journalist you are becoming a journalist you got to always keep a watch on the government what it does it should not abuse its powers no um, i don't know say mr anab goswami does he do that i so i wouldn't call him a journalist at all because a journalist is supposed to do that and i don't think many journalists are doing it they have to Yeah, are you a journalist? Yes, I am. Uh, I hope you keep a watch on what the government is doing. From your questions, I can find you are doing it. <laughs> I hope so. Yes, because our only job is to speak truth to power, right? Whoever is in power, or whoever uh, is power. Yeah, whoever is in power. That's right. I'm not saying that this this party or that party. That means then you are a politician, which you yes. which which we are not. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I will hand over to Raghu now. Yeah, thank you, sir, for your frank and uh, forthright views. It's been refreshing, and people like you, with your exemplary record, offer a ray of hope for the future. Uh, thank you, Danya, for being such a great interlocutor, and thank you, audiences, for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>